The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Birch. Hey everybody, this is Birch. Uh, humility goes a long way. Like a long, long way. It doesn't work for everyone. And people who are particularly kind of uh, lack confidence in themselves and are bolstering that up with just a lot of arrogance and, and being pissy tend to react negatively. But just being being relatively humble, uh, being a little self-deprecating, you know, not coming in like you're the biggest star in the world. It's a good play. Um, anywhere you're at, certainly comics, uh, which we'll get to, but but just in your professional life. I've mentored people in the past who are trying to get into management. And one of the big myths that they tell people is, you know, when you go for a senior job and particularly they tell women this, you know, if you're going to, you're going to be a strong woman in the workplace at a senior you know, level of, of management, you got to go in there and you got to like throw down and you got to quickly establish your, you know, your dominance and other things. It's, it's not great advice. It's a careful balance. Can't be a pushover. But going in and just uh, lighting the world up on fire gets people to, you know, reject and go against you very quickly. It, it's you, you fight battles you don't need to fight. And it just, uh, you know, and then you also set yourself up where if you're going to bring a lot of attitude, you got to bring a lot of game and a lot of skill. And, you know, usually the first one uh, people people bring in and forget the second. Um, it's, you know, so you see it in comics a lot. And there's a lot of. People who boast and brag and, and talk about how impressive they are and, and like to throw a lot of shade around. But notice those same people have kind of a deeper thin ego. And it's like it, it could be punctured with even the lightest weight comments. And often these people are ones who are late, who, you know, the Marvel has to push back, get a fill in artist or a writer for some comic because they're not bringing it in in time or, or any number of things. And all that does is set up an eventual scenario where, you know, you laugh at the Schrodinger of their uh, <laughs> of their uh, their problems, um, whether it's you know a drug addiction or you know the, it just it it all that is is it, it gets people to want to root against you, which is you know again a meaningless fight. The fight you want to have is for your bank account for the work you produce, not kind of random people because you're being an arrogant jackass and you're just generating arguments. Uh, but it, but it does happen. And, and I mean, part of it, look, I, I mean, the other facet of this is uh, certainly YouTube and video channels. It rewards people who are dicks. So if you go on and you, you're really smug, cocky prick, you know, granted, you're not anyone that somebody wants to hang out with a, you know, in real life, unless, uh, unless they just get to observe you shitting on other people. Um, but it, it, it's, it, you know, people like to tune in to watch people roast other people. It's fine. Um, but that, well, you know what? I say it's fine. The behavior is wearing thin. If you look at some of the numbers of some of the channels with the real kind of arrogant people, the people who are, you know, constantly patting themselves, everything is down. Like the trajectory is going down in some cases fast in some cases slow, but in all cases it's dropping. And I think it's just, it, pe people are it, getting tired of it. It's, it's at some point. You got to bring something other than shade. Well, this uh, this letter writer is, is kind of commenting on the same thing. It said, Dear, Dear Munster, Perch P. Perchington, a.k.a. the third-legged god. That's the dick. Uh, I finally remembered where that third leg line was from. The boys. Wee Huey uh, was... Um, Wee Huey. Wee Huey wears a t-shirt that says the third leg of God when the men in black uh, from Voight came to make him sign an NDA regarding his girlfriend getting killed. That's right. First issue. First episode. Anyway, this is a somewhat short question. Did we lose something when comics grew up and started to be accepted as a legitimate form of prose art? Some Same could be said for manga. It feels like um, more groundbreaking aspects of the medium really shined when they were trying to prove that uh, to everyone that they were artists too. Um, we'll get to the rest of this in a second. But it fits along with, with uh, kind of what I said. I think... You know, comic books, they didn't need to be kid funny books, you know, uh, junk. But the more that we got this uh, almost legitimized, it's a graphic novel and it's, it's specialized art. It, it, it changed the dynamic. And, and in many cases, it, it stopped comics from being able to put out issues that were just kind of silly or standalone or simple. 
And instead, it set a new bar that people had to, to hit where, you know, everybody's trying to compete for being as impactful, as important as Watchmen or The Dark Knight Returns. And that's a, I, I think it's a bad standard to try and hold everyone to. Not all comics are meant to be Watchmen or Dark Knight Returns. You know, that it, it's not like those are the pinnacle of comics either. It's just those are comics that are certainly taking themselves more seriously, trying to tell a more kind of narrative story there. And it is, uh, it, it's, 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 it's shooting for a different thing. Um, but I do think comic books fell into this um, trap a little bit where the medium as a whole is now being uh, kind of seen and perceived and, and judged as elevated work. And once that happened, yeah, I think it, it led to, uh, it led to this problem. It led to uh, more or less, uh, people trying to shoot for things they can't possibly do at writing checks for mouth count cat count can't ash. I can't talk this morning. Jesus. But that's, that's, I think, I think it's, I don't know if he lost something or just it, um, it, it basically created a dynamic where one felt like some of the creators involved were, you know, patting themselves on the back a little bit too much, a little too arrogant for the work that they were producing. And, and two, it just, it, it removed the ability to just have comics be kind of fun and simple stories. And I think that's, that's, you know, you could go down the line of all the, it can't include things like, um, uh, it, you know, it, the, the reason why the villain has to be more in depth or, um, why, you know, you can't have a hero just fight some you know, clownish, cartoonish person who's trying to take over the world. Instead, we've got to fight, you know, at more abstract terms, the patriarchy. We got to fight the, you know, we got to fight something that relates more to, uh, to, to current events, or we need to do commentary on political, you know, manipulation and where, what is fascism? And, you, you know, there's this, uh, what, you know, one of the Star Trek IDW books is filled with these little kind of silly, uh, uh, notes. Um, and it's, it's Heather Antos who's putting them in it's, it's her style. Um, to me, I think it's irritating in the sense that, you know, the writers try to tell a story and the editors inserting little things into the story. Um, but whatever, but, but anyway, it's, it's this, you know, you're, you're reading a Star Trek adventure and somebody in the comic wants to lecture you about, and they're doing it in a tongue in cheek way. And it, this isn't the end of the world. People did, I saw other channels doing videos on this, like it was the the entire sky was falling, but again, you're, you're buying Star Trek, you're buying a, something from IDW, you're buying something from a creative team where, you know, it, you know what you're getting to some extent. Now, does it belong in a Star Trek comic? No, but again, you know, you, you know what you're getting, um, doesn't excuse it. It just, it, it, you know, at some point it's like, fooled me once, you know, shame on you, fooled me 5,000 times, you know, shame on me. I mean, there's, there's, there's just a point where, uh, you know what you're getting, but, Anyway, um, these comments are there because, you know, even though it sounds like kind of a silly throwaway line, they're trying to do something bigger with it. They're, they're trying, they're basically saying, you know, it's, it can't just be a book where, you know, you know, the Star Trek captain is fighting aliens. Instead, we've got to make it a, you know, breaking wall, Easter egg laden commentary on social conditions, but also do it in kind of a quippy way because that's how people like to digest their serious talk. I mean, all these things, I think, um, lead to this idea that comic books are an elevated form of entertainment, so it has a higher responsibility. Something I've heard writers tell me a lot, you know, we have a higher responsibility. Yet you, you're right, you do, to entertain. That's the higher responsibility. There's Just like I've, I've commented that um, I think that cartoons, animation, is good as is. You don't need to do live action or justify it. Comics can be entertaining and that's justification enough that's they they don't need to be more you know if again if you don't if you don't meet the bar of watchmen you haven't produced something junky you've you've still produced if it's entertaining it's entertaining that's 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 a gift it's impressive enough anyway the the mail ends with a ps it says ps i i heard this phrase re-watching the magicians for the hundredth time I could not do that I, I tried the magicians i i the first season i was like okay and then it lost me at some point. I, I don't know. Um, and I think it perfectly encapsulates the attitudes of most of the creators complaining about how comics either broke them or is broken. Um, 
they wear a thin layer of insulas over an open pit of self-pity. The arrogance they have when they say they don't care about sales or what customers have to say because they got paid by the publishers, not us. That kind of snobbish uh, collegiate attitude is so persistent in comics, yet the art doesn't warrant such fractious behavior. Sorry, I got a little ranty at the end, messed up my short question. No, 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 it's fine. No, but that's that that completes the circle nicely. That that's just it. Um, again, if if you are going into the workplace, if you're wanting to climb the ranks, go into management, or just sell things to people, um, then you know you need to have a humble attitude. You know, don't you, you're when you set. You know, when you, when you come in a lot of arrogance, you're setting a big mountain in front of yourself and maybe you have the talent to scale it and good for you. Um, you know, impressive, but it's a needless climb in a lot of cases, your audience, your customers, whoever it happens to be looking to be entertained. They're looking to, you know, just, just enjoy something. And if you come in over the top and you, you know, set up this, the standard, of, you know, not just that you're better than everyone and your work is, is elevated, um, but also, you know, go at your customer base to say, you know, you it, basically when all is said and done, when people say, you know, if you don't like my comics, don't all that kind of stuff. What they're in effect is saying, you may not be good enough to like my comics. That is what they're saying. Um, I, I, I mentioned this once to a writer and they're like, I, well, I don't know where you get that from. No, but th but that's what that arrogance that's that's in effect the subtext the arrogance you're saying you know if you, you whether it's your politics whether it's what you write on social media whether whatever it happens to be if the attitude is you know um, don't buy my book or my book's not for you you're not saying hey you're a wonderful person who's super smart and really bright and my comic book's not for you that's not that's not what people are saying that's not what they're, they're saying you're not good enough to read my work. And as soon as you open up that door, again, you're just, you're creating this mountain of arrogance that you're going to need to climb. And if you're really super skilled, you could do that and you could be one of the greats. And, and that sounds great. Now, I would argue, you know, you could have been that being humble too, had an easier road of it and brought more people along on your journey. But most people do not have the talent and especially the people who are uh, dumb enough to run their mouths definitely don't have the talent. There is a certain scale where the more arrogant you are, the more uh, boastful and bragging you are, the uh, the actual less skilled you are at other things. And there's a lot of writers and artists, and I can think of several, who their number one skill is bragging about themselves. And their writing or their art is passable. Or was once was better and getting worse fast. You know? That's all kinds of speculation who I'm talking about. But I mean, look, it, 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 it's a... It's all, it's all subjective anyway. But, uh, by, but I'm sure you can think of plenty of people that fit into that category. You know, it, it's, would you rather be a humble, average writer who people love or an arrogant, average writer that everyone hates? I don't know. I guess it's whatever, uh, whatever makes you hard. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for listening.